In today's lab, we're going to determine the chemical composition of a penny. In uh, 1983, the U.S. changed the way they minted pennies. Prior to that, in 1982 and before that, uh, pennies were almost all copper. Today, pennies are mostly zinc covered with copper. And we're going to determine what percent of a penny is uh, zinc and what percent is copper. The pennies are placed into three groups and I've indicated the year in which the penny was minted from each of the groups. The next step is to clean the pennies by using steel wool. Now that the pennies have been cleaned with steel wool and then washed off with distilled water and dried, I'm now going to use this triangular file and I'm going to uh, use that to scratch through, make notches, and uh, to expose the zinc under the copper of each of these pennies. As you can see, I've made several notches in the penny. Uh, and that is to allow multiple areas for the hydrochloric acid to get to the zinc that's under the copper and also to uh, allow for the gas, the bubbles, to escape and hopefully uh, the reaction can go to completion. Now that each of the pennies is notched, I'm going to weigh them on an analytical balance. When using an analytical balance, it's important that we place a piece of weighing paper. Now you'll notice that this is enclosed to prevent air currents. Uh, this balance will go to four decimal places. Um, and so I'm going to place a piece of paper down and close this and press tear. Wait for it to pause. I'll press tear. And once it pops up with zeros, I'll use forceps and drop the first penny on there and close this. And once the numbers stop moving and the G pops up, 2.4416. Notice I've written 2.4416 next to the date of the penny I just masked. So I weighed all the pennies and I've written their masses for group A. Group B. And group C. For today's lab we're going to need to make a diluted acid solution of hydrochloric acid. Uh, to do this I need to uh, calculate and then make the solution. It says I need about 500 milliliters of 4 molar hydrochloric acid. Uh, the only problem is what we have in the stock room is a bottle of concentrated hydrochloric acid which is 12 molar. So how do you go about making this? Well you're going to dilute the concentrated and so the first thing you need to do when doing this type of problem is determine how much of the concentrated acid is needed for this dilution. There is a dilution formula when we get to uh, solutions that you'll learn which is molarity 1 times volume 1 is equal to molarity 2 times volume 2. So since I need 500 milliliters of the 4 molar I'll put that on the left side and determine how much of the 12 molar I need on the right side. 
For this lab, I will need to dilute 167 milliliters of the concentrated acid. Now let's head over to the fume hood to make this solution. This is a 500 milliliter volumetric flask. Notice that this flask has one line on it and that line indicates the 500 milliliter mark. I've also placed some distilled water in this uh, volumetric flask and the reason I did that was because whenever you're diluting concentrated acids you need to put water in the flask first then add the acid to it. I also have measured out 167 milliliters of the concentrated hydrochloric acid. I'm now going to pour the acid into the flask. Now that the concentrated acid has been added, I'm going to pour in distilled water and uh, to where we're close to the mark and when we get close then I will add by drop to get us to the mark. Notice that the meniscus is on the line indicating that we have 500 milliliters of 4 molar hydrochloric acid. I will now take a piece of parafilm, which is unreactive uh, material, and I'm going to put that on top so I can uh, seal this and mix it. I placed the pennies for group A and for group B into beakers and group C. I'm now going to cover each of these pennies with about 20 milliliters of the four molar hydrochloric acid. As you can see the pennies are now reacting. This is group A's pennies. You can make observations. These are group B pennies. You can make your observations. These are group C pennies. You can make your observations. It's been about 24 hours and notice that the pennies, uh, now group A has one penny in the middle that's not floating. That means there may be some residual zinc. We'll have to test that. Uh, all of the ones from uh, group B are floating. That's a good sign. And all of those from group C are also floating. Okay, now I've rinsed all of the pennies from group A with distilled water and what I want to do is look at that middle penny that was floating earlier and I noticed that uh, that most places of this penny are kind of foil like however in the middle there's a hard ridge that contains some zinc so what I'm going to have to do is put this penny back into the acid for about another hour. The rest of the pennies, the other pennies uh, for all the groups are going to go into some distilled water beakers for a few minutes to completely neutralize the acid. So all of the pennies from group A are in distilled water except for the middle one it is in the fume hood under acid. All of the pennies from group B are in distilled water for a little bit and all of the pennies from group C are in distilled water for a little bit. As you can see the pennies have been placed on paper towels 
and the pennies now at this point are simply a copper foil. This is from group A once again there, there's one in the fume hood that's still under acid but you can see that this one opened up and you can see that what we have here for each of these pennies is basically just a thin copper shell. The inside of a penny is primarily zinc Okay, the uh, second penny for group A is now done. All of the pennies have been rinsed in distilled water and given a couple hours to dry. Now we're going to weigh them on the balance and write down their final masses. Once again, when using an analytical balance, we must use weighing paper. And I'm going to press tear. Now that all of the uh, zeros are up, I'm now going to take this penny and place it on the balance. As you can see, the mass of this penny is now 0 0.0718 grams. Now I record that data on my original sheet for group A. Alright, the remaining pennies have been weighed so you can see their initial masses to the left and the final masses. This is group A. Group B. And group C.